All right, guys, we're taking a break from Project Big Ben this week to talk about knee wraps. So this past week, I had one of my athletes who is just about to test his one rep maxes. We're, we're deep in the off season. We're about to transition to meet prep. And so we wanted to kind of see where we're at before we begin that process. And we've been playing around with knee wraps recently. We've decided that we're not going to compete in them. But we do want to see, okay, what kind of carryover do we get out of these wraps? We're going to test our, our one rep max and wraps. And so he's been tightening his wraps up lately, and he was telling me, you know, I felt a lot better with the wraps loose, even though everybody says, you got to crank these up as tight as possible. And I'm not just talking about the fact that, you know, his, his legs were all bruised up and it hurt and all that shit, but, like, he felt like his performance was no better for having these wraps tight. And I think that is often the case and i think it's a major misconception that's tied to bigger misconceptions about the use of knee wraps so let's start by looking at this very popular chart comparing different types of knee wraps now there are some problems with this chart and we're going to start with this bottom area okay this part was taken from harris strength systems and it shows okay based on the style of squatting and your speed of squatting you want to use different types of re-wraps. Knee wraps, you want either more stopping power or more rebound. I'm going to discuss this later. These, the continuum between stopping power and rebound is accurate. You get one or the other, but not both completely. So there's a trade-off there, but it doesn't depend on your squatting style. Then when you go to this upper portion, right? This is from Pioneer Fitness. He's ranked a bunch of different categories. So, again, like I said, we're going to discuss the continuum between stopping power and rebound, but it, you can't rank them like this, okay? And ease of use, you can't really rank that either. That's totally subjective and it's based on your squatting style. Comfort, maybe, maybe. Um, but the two important things, in my opinion, are thickness and stretch. So let's get into this. When you're looking for more stopping power, you want thick knee wraps because you want more material behind the knee. The more material you have behind the knee, the easier it is to stop yourself on the way down. If you want rebound, you're not looking for more stretch, okay? What you're looking for is stronger elastic. So it doesn't really matter how much the knee wraps stretch because you can take a very stretchy pair of knee wraps and you can stretch them till the cows come home but once they're pulled taut if you wrap them they become a cast wrap okay that's why you want a very strong elastic because you won't be able to pull it quite as taut and so when then you squat you can take advantage of the stored energy because you're stretching as you go down you're stretching the wraps and then you can have more energy for that rebound that comes out of the wraps as you extend your knee. Okay, so why can't you just get the thickest knee wraps you can find with the strongest elastic and get the best of both worlds? Get ultimate casting and ultimate rebound. This is where squatting style comes in. The more material you have behind your knee, the more momentum you need to hit depth because all that material is going to bunch up and it's going to make it really, really hard to get your hips down. To bend your knees enough to get your hips down so if you have a lot of material behind the knee you either need to use a ton of weight or squat very quickly but if you squat very quickly generally you don't want casting you want rebound right because you squat quick and you're trying to take advantage of the bounce out of the hole so for practical reasons, you have to choose between one or the other. So the question is, well, what about the, the really big fat guys who are using a ton of weight and have a slow squatting style? Well, don't they, couldn't they get the best out of both worlds? And the answer is generally still no, because the big guys have huge fucking legs, right? And so they can't get a whole lot of material behind the knee. So they're more concerned about getting these thick knee wraps, and that's why they say you got to get them super, super tight because they're trying to get as much material behind the knee as possible, or else they're not going to get anything out of them. And all that 
stuff kind of gets conflated, right? Because, again, like, you could look at squatting styles. Usually, the bigger guys are going to be the wider, slower stance squatters. But not always, but usually. Usually, the little guys who want the the more rebound are going to have the narrower stance. But then their legs are smaller, so they want so they're going to have more material behind the knee anyway. So everything kind of gets confused, and I think this is why people struggle so much to find the right type of knee wrap. So what do you do? You try a bunch, you see which feels best, and you go with it. And you don't worry too much about what other people think or what you know some picture on the internet says. Easy. Okay, so I also want to show you guys how to wrap your knees because I think a lot of people will get this wrong as well. And even though you might have different goals, you want, might want more casting, you might want more rebound, I still think you should wrap your knee in the same way. Not necessarily the same tightness, but you should use the same method. There are a few different methods, but they're going to have some similarities, and I'm going to specifically talk about those similarities. The very first part is that when you're about to wrap your knees, you must flex your quad as hard as you can, and you also must pull your toes back as far as you can. Here's the reason for that. When I pull my toes back, it's pulling my calf muscle away from my knee. Watch that. See? So the further my calf muscle is away from the knee, the, the belly of the muscle anyway, the more wrap I'm going to be able to get under this knee right here. If I have... My, my calf relax, all this shit's going to bunch up and that's when you're going to bruise and you're going to lose tightness. So even if you're looking for rebound, you still want to pull these uh, feet back as far as you can so you can get more material actually behind the knee. The reason you squeeze the quad is very similar, okay? So you've got the teardrop right here, right? The vastus medialis. You want this covered. Okay, that's going to keep the, keep the wrap locked in place because you can see it goes all the way down to your kneecap. If you don't keep this covered, you just go around, the wrap's going to slide down the knee. So you have to wrap the teardrop. You do not want to wrap this part of the quad up here because this, and I think this is the fastest, longest or some shit, I can't remember. This one goes all the way up your leg, right? This part of the quad. So if you wrap this shit down, you're not going to be able to hit depth. So you only want to wrap the teardrop, not this part. And so you have to cut the wrap off right at that very bottom. All right, you'll see a lot of people wrapping all the way at the knee. And usually in that case, they don't want the wraps that tight. And so they're really looking to just use some of that excess material. And if it's not that tight up here, that's fine. But I still think you're better off getting more material behind the knee. And honestly, use a shorter wrap if you have to. Just because you're in a fed that allows three meters, you don't have to use it. If I were using the Pioneer Phantoms, I couldn't use three meters to save my life. I can't even use two and a half the thing is so thick. Okay, so don't feel locked into, into that. Once you've got those things down, there, there's a couple different ways you can wrap your knee, and there's no one right way. So I'm going to show you my preferred way just so you guys have a reference point. But keep in mind, if you prefer a different way, if you're shown a different way, that's probably fine. All right, so I'm going to use the lead FTS crates. These are my favorites. I've discussed that already. Um, they're not pre-rolled tightly. It's just easier to handle the wrap if it is pre-rolled. Some people don't like that. Some people want it loose. Usually those are the people who want a looser wrap. Um, that's okay, but I'm going to show you guys a caveat to that, to that point if you don't want a pre-roll. Okay, so the big thing people get wrong here is when you're wrapping your knee, you need constant tension. People call this 360 degrees of tension, and that's true. Um, but for me, it's a little confusing because I don't think well in spaces. So I like to think of constant tension. And I'm going to show you guys the difference between constant tension and what a lot of people do. Okay, so I like to start with my wrap directly under the knee again so I get as much material under here as possible. And, and I'm not wrapping that tightly. Uh, so constant tension, all right? As I pull around, I'm pulling out as well, so that I am keeping all this tension in the wrap. And as I pull in, I'm almost trying to re-roll this pre-rolled wrap, okay? That means the wrap stays evenly stretched. No matter where it is on my leg, the stretch is the same. Now, watch how it's different if you go like this, and then you pin it down. Well, now you've got more stretch over here and less over here. 
So your rap's all fucked up. So you have to make sure that you're kind of trying to re-roll the rap as you unroll it, and that's going to keep tension all the way around. Now, you can still do that if you don't want to pre-roll, um, because pre-roll is a pain in the fucking ass. So, if you don't want to do that, or if you find it too unwieldy to hold this big-ass ball of, uh, of knee wrap, what you got to do, when you put this here, right, so you wrap around, again, this is a pretty loose wrap, when you pull this out, you're not going to go as far as you can. Before you pin this down, you got to then pull more, okay? And then before I pin this part down, then i got to pull more. This is also a pain in the ass, so I prefer to pre-roll. But you have to, if you pin down, right, and then yank again, and then yank again, you're not going to get that constant tension, okay? So, those are the two big things. Pull the toes back all the way, get this calf belly away from the knee, squeeze the quads so that you can wrap the VMO and not the rest of your quad, okay? Constant tension is the other one. If you get those two things right, right, I don't really care whether you use my style, whether you use a butterfly style, whatever, um, but you, you have to do those or your wrap isn't really going to be that effective. Thank mm -hmm. you.